what really is so tight? What is so tight? And so my own personal definition of so tight is, this is how I wrote it. I wrote that a so tight is established when emotional energies cross sexual boundaries. So basically, a so tight happens when people have sex. But that's not the only time a soul tie happens because from my own research and study and the inspiration that I've received from God, I found out that there, is, there are actually like two types of soul ties. Okay, so we have the temporary soul tie and then we have the permanent soul tie. So what do I mean by temporary soul tie? A temporary soul tie often is generated with words spoken with affection. I love you. I will love you forever. You are the best thing that's ever happened to me. You are this, you are that. I mean, those words are powerful. And then it could also be that even beyond I love you, encouraging words, motivational words that you have started speaking to someone and suddenly they get used to your words, okay? Those things can create a soul tie. And that's what happens when you see that uh, some people just get so used to hearing from you that they want to call you from time to time. They don't, if, I mean, if they haven't heard from you in a day, it's like that day has not made any sense. That can also start a temporary soul tie. Stuff like that, soul ties like that don't stay forever. Sometimes if they, if they lose contact with such person for a while, it could just wane and disappear. Okay, another one again under the category of temporary soul tie is for instance, uh, when you in engage in premarital kind of activities like uh, kissing, caressing, smooching and all of that, that could also generate some type of temporary soul tie. Emotional exchanges could happen and a soul tie could start. And that's why you have that kind of habit of trying to repeat those things. You want to do it over and over again until maybe you get yourself in a position where you get involved in what leads to the actual permanent soul tie, which is sexual intercourse. So those are the things that happen with temporary soul tie. But the permanent soul tie actually is generated when emotional energies cross sexual boundaries. In other words, when people copulate. All right. Now, I want us to go deep down into how this really happens. Okay. If soul tie is generated through sexual intercourse, how exactly does it work? I would like us, in order to understand this properly, I would like us to read the book of Proverbs chapter 5, verses 15 to 19. It says, drink water from your own cistern and the running water from your own well. So there are two components involved here. <laughs> so we have cistern and then we have well. So a cistern is a storage facility. A cistern is a reservoir, and a well is not a reservoir. A well produces little waters. It produces water and stores it there. In our villages and in so many places where they don't have a lot of water, they always dig wells. And when you dig well, you never stop until you get to the point where water starts coming out from the ground. You see this water coming out, bumping up from the ground like that. You'll be like, oh, wow, we made it and then it starts producing water to store in that well. So well has water that it produces. The cistern needs water to go into it. So let me explain this to you now. In this one line in the scripture, the Bible here is talking about emotional energy and reproductive sexual energy at the same time. So cistern is referring to emotional energy and the running water from your own well, which is what? Is the reproductive sexual energy. Like when a man and a woman get ready to meet, you know that the woman produces fluid, right? Of course, that fluid is what the Bible is referring to here as well. 
the reproductive sexual energy that's the where but the emotional part of this woman in terms of when they get involved in that sex because there are two things that happen this well and the system must be involved whenever a sexual intercourse takes place there must be an exchange of emotional spiritual energy and there must be the flow of the water from the well so emotional energy cistern and then reproductive sexual energy as well as the well in one line but then we go to the second line, which is in, in verse 16. It says, should your fountains be dispersed abroad? Streams of water in the streets. Again, he uses two. <laughs> it brings two terms here. He uses fountain and then he uses what? Streams of water. Now, fountain is more like a cistern when you look at it on the side of the man. A fountain is all about energy. A fountain is known for how much power it throws into the air. It's known for how much movement it makes. And a fountain, when it moves, it drops water into like a basin and then the water is recycled, goes back into it all over again. It is just made to produce energy and create effects and all of that. So a fountain here is what to the man, what cistern is to the woman. In other words, fountain here is also referring to emotional energy. And then streams of water is also referring to what? To the reproductive sexual energy in the man. So you can see in those two lines, verse 15 and 16, God is talking about emotional energy and he's also talking about sexual energy, em a, a reproductive sexual energy. So for instance, if you look at the well for the woman, is the fluid that happens during sex. The, 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 the streams of water for the man is probably the, the semen or the, the reproductive fluid that also happens to the man during sexual intercourse. So let's go down to verse 17. It says, let them be only your own and not for strangers with you. So you see this emotional energy and the sexual reproductive energy, God says, be selfish with it. Don't, don't be too generous with it don't go about dispersing it all over be like what they call in nigeria keziah you everybody that wants you should give them your sexual energy anybody that comes by anything in skirt boom no he said be very selfish with it let it be yours alone and then he goes for that in verse 18 he said let your fountain be blessed your emotional energy be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. In other words, the Bible says, when you make this thing selfish, make it only for yourself, let it go to only one woman, one person, and that person is the wife of your youth, is the person that this energy should go to. In other words, the Bible says, let your soul tie be with the wife of your youth, the woman that you want to marry or that you are married to. This emotional energy is meant to be directed only at your wife, not all the girls on the street or at your job. It has a direction. So God said, let him be blessed. Then you rejoice with the wife, not with all the girls, but with the wife of your youth. And then he went further to make all this beautiful emotional statement here when he says, as a loving dear and graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love. Not their love, but with her love, one person. So, going by what we have in Proverbs chapter 5, verse 15 to 19, I think it becomes a little easier to now understand what happens during a soul tie.